Hi. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the application of some of the nine rules of probabilities to a particular problem that will resemble uh, problems that you are challenged with in your lab or in your quiz or in your exam number three. So the first thing I'll do is I'll remind you of the map we built for chapter five in a previous session. And uh, now I'm going to go through a problem that will be typical of the pattern of questions you will encounter in your study work through lab five, quiz five, and then later on in exam three. Every problem is gonna have to tell you something about the event that is contextually uncertain, and it'll have to tell you about the outcomes of the event so that you're able to build a probability space so that once you have that built probability space, you can then use any one or a combination of the nine rules of probability to get through the event and the calculations therein. So for example, let's suppose that uh, we know a, a few things about the following. A population of students at a local community college has a student body that consists of 45% men and 55% women. This population has 24% of students majoring in what's called STEMBI areas. Now STEMBI are science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or business. That's what STEMBI is. And the rest study liberal arts and sciences. So liberal arts and sciences would be something like history of art or philosophy or humanities or economics or sociology or psychology, things like that, English literature, those types of studies. We also know that two-fifths of the women are MB majors. We also know that two-fifths of the women are STEM B majors. Okay. So that sentence is really important because it tells you something that combines the idea of one way to view this event, which is by whether people are men or women, with the other conceptualization of the same population, which is by whether people are STEM B majors or not STEM B majors. So in this case, we really have two things going on. We have people being described as men or women and people being described as STEMBI or not STEMBI. And finally, we have a third idea about the event, which is the population of students at a local community college. And this population can be thought of in both ways jointly. Okay. So notice how the first situation talks just about men versus women. And the second talks about people majoring in STEMBI 
or measuring in liberal arts and sciences. But this third one combines the first characterization with the second characterization. So we could think of men and women as being this, as describing one dimension of these students and the majors that these people study as a different dimension. And so uh, we can assign a column dimensionality to one and a row dimensionality to the other. And that gives me the idea of perhaps I can build a table. And that's what I'm gonna try and do. A table that is the way I describe my uh, probability space for the event, student body at a local community college student, and the outcomes are going to be men and women one way by column. And then by row, I'm gonna talk about these being STEM majors or these being liberal arts and sciences majors. So I can break down this entire population into rows, or I can do the same by column. And one thing I know about this population is that if I look at its entirety, it's gonna represent 100% of the students at this local college. And so the 1.00 represents all students together, everybody who will be broken down into characterizations in the other eight cells. And I already have some information about the other eight cells. For example, I know that 45% are men. And by something called the complement rule of probability, the rest of them are going to be cataloged as women or not men. I can also characterize the population of students by their intended major. So 24% are going to be described as STEMBI. And that means that the other students, the rest of the students, make up 76% of the student body. And that also adds up to 100% by the rule of complements. Complements imply that their probabilities in tandem add up to the whole event's probability. And by the overall rule of probability, the overall probability space measures 1.0 in probability terms. This 1.0 is telling you that that is a description of all possible things that could happen in this event. Okay. And the events are called students. So I'm gonna put that here. Students. Uh, I could be more descriptive. I could say students at a local community college. And the last part of this comes to us via a, this particular sentence here, where we say that two-fifths of women are STEM B majors. Okay, so what, where are the women? In this particular statement, women make up 55% of the data. So two-fifths of women would make 22% of the population. So 22 out of 55 is two fifths of the whole thing. So this 22% here is representative of the two fifths of women who are STEM majors. 22 out of 55 is two fifths of the 1.00. So that's how we find that particular value. And once I have that value, then the remaining values have to comply with the rule of complements, namely the 
percentage of men who study STEM is 2%. And the percentage of men who don't study STEM has to be 43%. And last but not least, the percentage of women who are studying liberal arts and other sciences is 33%. Because those three numbers have to be such that they add up or they make up the rest of the story. So 2% plus 22% equals 24%. And 2% plus 43% equals 45%. And 43 plus 33 equals 76%. And notice how now I've gotten nine different probabilities. I have the overall probability which is always going to be 1. I have four probabilities called marginal probabilities. For example, the probability that someone is a woman at this college, uh, that a student at this local community college is a woman, is 55%. The probability that a person is a man and majoring in STEM B, that would be 2%. That would be the interior number because the and creates an intersection or an adjoining of two possibilities, one vertical and one horizontal. And where those two numbers intersect, that's what we call the intersection, the intersection of two outcomes. We could also calculate probabilities that someone is a man or a STEMBI major, which is different than AND. AND requires that both components be present or requires that one component or the other be present. So the presence of the word or in a probability statement is inclusive. It's either one thing or the other. The presence of the word and requires that both parts, the first and the second one, be present. And when you require more and more and more things, you narrow the field even more and more and more. Whereas when you require alternatives, you expand the set. As we will see in later demonstration problems, the word and coincides with something called multiplications of probabilities, because that's how you make fractions smaller, by multiplying fractions with fractions. And then the word or is additive. So the word or implies using one of those last two rules of probability called addition rules. So where are the men in this data set. The men in this data set are these two and these 43%. So that takes care of man. And then where are the STEMBIs in this data set? Well, the STEMBIs are this 22% and also this 2% again. So when I count everybody who is either man or STEMBI, that includes everybody in the three sets that I've just created a perimeter around, and it excludes only the 33% on the bottom right-hand corner. So one way to calculate man or STEMBI is I could calculate it by saying that this is 1 minus 0 0.33. Or I could also calculate this by taking the probability that somebody is a man plus the probability that someone is a STEMBI and then subtract out whatever is being double counted as both man and STEMBI, which is called applying the general addition rule of probability. And as you can see here, this is 69% minus 2%, which is again, 
the same answer regardless. So the answer will not change whether you apply the addition rule or whether you look at the table and decide to apply a fancy version of the rule of complements to calculate the correct answer. Another calculation that can be performed is a calculation called a conditional probability. So I could ask, given that a student is a woman, I could ask what is the probability that the student is studying liberal arts? And that's called a conditional probability. And the way to write that probability is the probability that someone is a woman. Then you put a vertical line, and that vertical line signifies that what comes after the vertical line is a given or known condition. So you want to know the probability that someone is, I'm sorry, a liberal arts and other sciences major, given that the student is a woman because the given, the condition in this case, is that the person is a woman. So how do we calculate that? Well, the condition the condition in this case is that the person is a woman. So if we know that a person is a woman, If we know that the person is a woman, then we know we're talking about the 55% of people who are women in the data. And so our denominator in the probability computation will not be all of the people in the data, not the 100%, but only the 55% of women. Okay, so this 55% here represents the fact that we're only looking at the oval that contains only the 55% of women. A condition limits or conditions the probability space. So instead of looking at the whole probability space, we're only looking at the probability space of women. And within the probability, that probability space of 55% of people, only 33% of the 55% are studying liberal arts and other sciences. So the numerator of this computation then is 33 out of 55%. And 33 out of 55% is 3 fifths. And 3 fifths is 60%. That's how you would answer the conditional probability question. So notice how by building this probability space in the form of a contingency table, I'm able to actually apply any probability metric yeah. to this question, to this problem. So this particular problem actually enabled us to apply all nine rules of probability in these calculations. So I hope this problem was useful and helps you compute many different problems in your lab and in your quiz. I hope it was a good use of your time to watch this demonstration. Thank you.